Hello and welcome to this lesson on resistance, which is part of the electricity topic in AQAA level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at trying to define and calculate the concept of resistance. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to calculate the resistance in an electrical circuit, define the resistance in an electrical circuit, and then use that to calculate resistance from experimental values in a circuit. So in this lesson, we're going to carry out the following parts of the AQAA a level physics specification 3.5.1.1 the basics of electricity and 3.5.1.2 current voltage characteristics now in metals there are free electrons which can move between the fixed positively charged metal ions which are arranged in a lattice now these free electrons move randomly at a high speed however when a potential difference is applied across the metal the negatively charged electrons will accelerate towards the positive connection now, if these electrons were in a vacuum, well, the electrons would continue to accelerate unimpeded in this particular electrical field. However, in reality, this isn't what happens, because all materials which have a current travelling through them will have an electrical resistance. So in a metal wire, there is also metal ions in the wire, as well as the mobile charge carriers, as well as the electrons. Now, the mobile charge carriers will collide with the metal ions and they will slow down. So the mobile charge carriers knock into the ions and slow down. This will lower the current and this is what resistance is, which you can see here with your ion charge carrier collision. So you can note here that as the mobile charge carriers knock into your metal lattice, they will slow down and that will lower the current in the circuit. Now, the more blocking of those mobile charge carriers, then the greater the resistance. Now, there are many ways to alter the amount of collisions between the mobile charge carriers and the metal ions and therefore change resistance. But it's also important to note that during each collision, some of the electrons kinetic energy is transferred to the lattice of the positive ions in the metal. So this will increase the vibrational energy of the positive lattice, which will therefore increase the temperature of the metal. Now, now, if this energy transfer is large enough, the conductor may get hot enough to glow. And this is how inventions such as the incandescent light bulb, the kettle and the toaster work. Now, the natural speed of electrons within a metal is very high, but their progress through the metal lattice is very slow. Now, the drift velocity of the individual electrons is very slow due to the collisions with the metal lattice. Now, you might go, well, why does electricity seem to work instantaneously if the velocity of the electrons is very slow due to the collisions with the metal ions. Well, that's because there are electrons or mobile charge carriers throughout the material which, is, which, eat, which are moving slowly throughout. Now, this allows some of the electrons to move through the output device straight away when the circuit is complete, given the idea that electricity seems to work instantaneously. Now, if there were no collisions between the charge carriers and the ions, well, then there's no resistance. Now, materials like this are called superconductors, but currently, as of today, there are no superconductors present at room temperature. Now, this phenomena of resistance was first not noticed by George Ohm. Now, George Ohm was a school teacher and in his spare time began his research with the new invention of the time, the electrochemical cell, the battery, which was invented by Italian scientist Alessandro Volta. Now, Ohm's work first appeared in the famous book, which is the Galvanic Circuit Investigated Mathematically, in which he gave his complete theory of electricity. Now, in this work, he stated his law for the electromotive force acting between the extremities of any part of a circuit is the product of the strength of the current and the resistance of the circuit, a term which Ohm himself invented. Now, the book that Ohm wrote was the first example of the mathematical applications of electrical circuits. Now, while his work greatly influenced the theory and the applications of current electricity, at the time, it wasn't very well received. It's also interesting to note that Ohm was the first physicist to consider electricity to occur due to part Particles. Now, the work of Ohm uh, marked the beginning of circuit theory, which was later developed by Gustav Kirchhoff. Now, you will have considered Kirchhoff's laws of electrical circuits at GCSE, but you won't have called them that, but you'll look at them later in the course. So, when mobile charge carriers move to create a current, they have to push their way past lots of vibrating ions which make up that material. Now, the charge carriers collide with the ions, and this causes the carriers to slow down. Now, this was the idea of resistance, and it was 
was discovered by George Ohm in 1827, and so as a result, we named the unit of resistance after him, the Ohm. So Ohm realised that the current and potential difference were directly proportional for certain materials, and that this constant of proportionality is the resistance. So it's the ratio of how much energy is given to the object per charge uh, to the movement of the object makes. Now, it's important to note that the idea that current and potential difference are directly proportional is called Ohm's law. However, there are only certain conditions where Ohm's law is obeyed. Now, there are a number of factors that affect the amount of resistance in an electrical circuit. Factor 1 is the type of material, because the different materials have a different density of ions, so have a different number of collisions. Another factor is the length of the material. The longer the wire, the more collisions the charge carriers have with the ions. The third factor is the cross-sectional area of the material, because if you have a greater cross-sectional area, what that will mean is that there will be less collisions. The fourth factor is the temperature of the metal, because if the ions vibrate more, well then the charge carriers are more likely to collide with them, which is an extremely important idea. So we have our four factors, which are the type of material, the length of the material, the cross-sectional area of the material, and the temperature of the material. Now, as we know before, the resistance of the conductor depends upon the length of the conductor, the cross-sectional area of the conductor, the temperature of the conductor, and the material of the conductor, so the size and the density of its constituent parts. Now, these are called the physical conditions of the conductor. Now, the physical conditions are the quantities which can change the resistance in an object. Now, the physical conditions here are due to the conductor and nothing else. So, it's important to note that this this allows us to understand a relationship of Ohm's law and allow physicists to define electrical resistance, a fundamental principle of electricity. So what was said is as follows, that the resistance of a component in a circuit is a measure of the difficulty of making the current pass through the component caused by the repeated collisions of the charge carriers with each other and ions, which can be calculated with the following equation. Resistance in ohms is equal to potential difference across the component in volts divided by by the current through the component in amps. And this is an equation you covered at GCSE. Now this indicates to us that a resistance of one ohm needs a potential difference of one volt to maintain the current of one amp through it. Now common values of resistance include for a one meter uh, overhead power cable to be 0.005 ohms, a one meter, loud speak, one meter cable of a loudspeaker is 0.05 ohms, a one meter AV cable is five ohms, a loudspeaker itself is seven ohms, a hot light bulb is 150 ohms, a human body has a resistance of about a thousand ohms, and a voltmeter has a resistance of a hundred million ohms. Now resistors themselves are electrical components made to have a fixed value of resistance in an electrical circuit. Now we can also express this as an inverse, which is conductance, which is units of ohms to the minus one, which is current through the component in amps divided by the potential difference across the component in volts. Now an electrical conductor has a high conductance and an electrical insulator has a low conductance and a semiconductor can change its conductance. So you can see here are two equations, one for resistance and one for conductance, and you'll notice that they are inverses of each other. And either quantity can be used to express the ease with which a current can be produced in a material. Now, these equations in Ohm's law only work if the physical conditions, so the temperature, the length, the cross-sectional area in the material are kept constant, because the physical conditions of the material can change the resistance and conductance of the material. Now we can calculate resistance experimentally with the following method. You can place an ammeter in series with an object which is then used to measure the current through a resistor. Now in series the same current passes through both a resistor and an ammeter. So you'll need your ammeter there to measure the current in an electrical circuit and you'll always place an ammeter in series. Now it's important to note you assume that an ammeter has no internal resistance. Now remember it doesn't matter where you place your ammeter in a series circuit, it will always read the same value. 
Now the second step is to use a voltmeter to measure the potential difference across the object. Now the voltmeter must be in parallel with the object that it is measuring so that they have the same potential difference. So no current should pass through the voltmeter or the ammeter would not record the current through the object. Now this means in theory that the voltmeter has an infinite resistance, but in actuality it just has an extremely high resistance. So your voltmeter is needed to measure the potential difference in the electrical circuit and is placed in the parallel with the device that it measures. Now you would always assume that a voltmeter has an infinite internal resistance. Now the third step is that a variable resistor is used to adjust the current and potential differences necessary. So to investigate the variation of current with potential difference, the variable resistor can be adjusted in steps. And at each step you record the current and potential difference from the voltmeter and ammeter and the measurements can be plotted on the graph. So you need your real stat or variable resistor to vary the potential difference in current between the two to find that relationship. Now again the greater the range of values used, the more reliable the value gains. You want a big variance in potential difference in current. So you should always use a real stat or variable resistor in a circuit to gain the different values of current and potential difference. So to recap, to calculate the resistance experimentally, you would place an ammeter in series with an object which is then used to measure the current. You would then use a voltmeter to measure the potential difference across an object and that voltmeter must be placed in parallel with that object. Then with the third step, a variable resistor is used to adjust the current and potential difference as necessary and then you can investigate the variation of current and potential difference, record the different values and plot them on a graph. So the measurements of potential difference in current can give the following graph. So in this case, if you have V is the, the potential difference on the Y axis and current is on the X axis, you're going to have a Y intercept of zero as without a potential difference there will be no current in the conductor. So this gives us a gradient of our line to be resistance or 1 over conductance. Now again, this can only be used if the line of best fit is a straight line. Because if the line of best fit is a straight line through the origin, the material is said to obey Ohm's law. It's an ohmic conductor. And so a graphical representation of direct proportionality is a straight line through the origin. Now if a material does not follow this tra trend, it is not a straight line through the origin, we call it a non-ohmic conductor. So to summarise what we've looked at in today's lesson, we should understand that resistance is defined as potential difference over current, that you've got an ohmic conductor, a semiconductor diode and a filament lamp, that Ohm's law is a special case where I is directly proportional to V under constant physical conditions and you can treat an ammeter as ideal, so an ammeter having zero resistance and a voltmeter have an infinite resistance. Now if we've been successful and we've learnt in today's lesson, we should be able to calculate the resistance of an electrical circuit, define resistance in an electrical circuit, and then calculate resistance from experimental values based on this. So thank you very much for watching this lesson on resistance which is part of the electricity topic in AQA A-level physics. Thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day.